Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of Fundamentals of IoT, in short FIoT. In today's class, we are going to learn about statistical models as well as method. Okay. So these kind of statistical models as well as methods are mainly used in uh, analytics as well as uh, processing of the data. We can also see these kind of statistical models and methods in the research also. Okay. So the recent methodologies for the big data can be loosely grouped into three categories. One is resampling, another one is divide and conquer, and third one is the online updating. Okay. So all these things, all these categories will be uh, revolving around the context, considering a data sheet with n independent and identical distributed observations, where n is too big for the statistical routines such as uh, logistic regression okay now let's see some of the subsampling based methods as well as models so under subsampling based methods and models uh, the first one can be considered as the bags of little bootstrap okay so let's uh, analyze this particular bags of little bootstrap okay, point by point it is a combination of subsampling the m out of n bootstrap and the bootstrap to achieve computational efficiency okay so we have taken a subsampling okay of m out of n bootstrap okay which is uh, in order to achieve the efficiency okay so this particular blb blb means bags of little bootstrap consists of following steps first one is draw s subsamples of size m from the original data of size m so we are retrieving a subsample which we are considering it as m size okay so from what from the original data which we are considering it as size n next for each of the subsets draw r bootstrap samples of size n instead of m so for each of the subset we are considering a particular sample that sample uh, we name it as r bootstrap okay and that sample also will be taken in the size of n okay instead of n okay now after this thing we are obtaining the point estimates and their quality measures okay so from all the r bootstramples we are obtaining uh, the point estimates as well as their quality measures okay so the s bootstrap uh, estimates and quality measures are combined in order or we it can also be considered as the average in order to yield the overall point estimates as well as quality measures okay so this blb bags of little bootstrap will be having uh, some uh, sub procedures so the inner procedure applies the bootstrap to a subsample and the outer procedure combines the multiple bootstrap to the estimates okay all these methods and models are will be like this only like some mathematical or statistical it will it is a little bit difficult to understand okay you need to just go through that for the particular knowledge so the next one under the subsampling based methods and models we have leveraging okay so in leverage uh, in leveraging me method one samples a small portion of data with certain weights or you can also call it a, a small subsample from the main sample uh, is considered and it then the computations will be performed for the full samples using the subsamples as the surrogate okay so initially a subsample will be taken from the full sample then the competition will be uh, computations will be uh, undergoing to the full sample okay using the subsample as a circuit okay so the key to the success of leveraging method is the construction of weights the non uniform sampling probabilities so that the inferential data points are sampled with high probabilities okay so try to understand each and every point it will be somewhat meaningful okay the third one is mean log likelihood mean log likelihood okay so 
this method uses Monte Carlo averages calculated from the subsamples to the approximate the quantities needed for the full data. Okay. So all the averages will be calculated from the subsamples which are taken from the full data. Okay. So it's a kind of uh, uh, KL divergence. Okay. Or the averages ca calculated from the subsamples. Okay. So or uh, which leads to the maximum mean log likelihood estimation method. Okay. So the next one is subsampling based MCMC. So it is an uh, uh, Bayesian interfe uh, interference like Markov chain Monte Carlo, which in short we call it as MCMC. Okay. So it's an uh, big data is challenging because of the likelihood evaluation of every iteration. Okay. So this is also one kind of subsampling method. Okay. Next comes divide and conquer. Okay. This is one of the main heading divide and conquer. This divide and conquer algorithm uh, will be uh, having a, such names like divide and recombine, split and conquer or split or merge. Okay. Generally, it will be having three steps. The first one is partition partitions a big data set into k blocks next process the each block separately and next aggregates the solution from each block in the form of a final solution to the full data okay so divide and conquer will be having three steps first one uh, let me explain once again partitioning a big data set into k, uh, k blocks okay so the full data set we are uh, uh, subdividing into uh, data sets which we are calling it as k block okay next each block will be processed separately okay after that a solution will be uh, brought from the each block after uh, processing okay now under this we have some uh, sub methods that is what we are going to see aggregated estimation or estimating equations okay so it will be a kind of an uh, estimated variance matrix, okay? Or the success of this method for a linear regression depends on the linearity of the estimation equations, okay? So it's all kind of an uh, mathematical representation, okay? So it's in short what we can say that uh, the aggregated estimating equations will be... Uh, equating equation for the full data okay full data is in simple summation or full data is in simple combination of all the blocks okay next comes the majority voting so this is also somewhat like an uh, mathematical uh, uh, representation okay so consider a divide and conquer approach for generalized linear models okay so here again we need to uh, take the sample size okay from the large data as well so let me show you see let us say the data of size n is converted into k blocks the size of k uh, k blocks with respect to n is taken as o, o or 0 of n by k okay so each block is separately okay is considered okay in order to have the total output next comes the analysis of variance okay so these analysis of variance are the most popularly used for the analytics or to compare uh, a particular parameters okay so analysis of variance in short we call it as ANOVA it is used to compare the mean between two or more items for example, see, a car company wishes to compare the average petrol consumption, okay, of different models of car, okay. So, a pet petrol will be uh, filled into the different models of the car of the same company and that will be tested such that each model will be estimated how much liters per kilometer it is consuming. That is how an ANOVA is considered. Not only that, if you take the example of a teacher, okay, 
so a teacher can be an interested in comparing average percentage marks in the examination with respect to five different subjects all these comparisons methods can be done with respect to the variance we also have two way under this we also have two way analysis of variance okay so this is also somewhat like an uh, uh, comparison of elements such as observations genders dosage okay so in order to calculate the mean variance all these things will be considering under analysis of the variance and also two way analysis of the variance okay you can go through all these points so as a test result we can also uh, calculate the null hypothesis uh, hypothesis okay so whether it is possible or not possible okay we can come come to a conclusion see we also have an one way analysis of variance and the next one is degree of freedom in a statistical point of view okay so the data will be having some sort of uh, statistical constraints okay so let us say the degree of freedom is considered as capital n and the mean of that particular degree of freedom capital n data is let us say 1000 so the degree of freedom now it will become n minus 1 if there are more statistical constraints uh constraints okay uh, it goes to the n minus 2 the degree of freedom goes to the n minus 2 and if at all if it has more statistical constraints it keeps on going n minus 1 n minus 2 n minus 3 like that it keeps on uh, adding okay next comes the sum of squares so it is a way of calculating the variation okay so in order to calculate the value mean okay all these things can be test uh, considered okay so anova is the synthesis of several idea used for multiple purposes okay and uh, this particular sum of square is to calculate the calculate the mean and also uh, different model performance can be tested okay so we in short we call it as f test okay so those who are doing research kind of thing they are very much familiar about this uh anova and all these concepts okay so the group variation mean uh, all these things can be considered with respect to sum of squares or the analysis of the variance okay next comes the dispersion this dispersion kind of uh, data is uh, very much famous as it is graphically represented okay so the uh, this data shows how it is spreaded time to time okay so if you see over here the data in the year 2015 is represented in the form of a graphical representation and in uh, 2000 you can clearly see a peak okay rise in peak so year to year the data can be uh, grouped okay so you can have a clear picture of how data can be estimated year to year or time to time this is how a dispersion can be uh, shown so this dispersion can be measured in number of ways range range means maximum value min minus minimum value not only that we also have a variation ratio okay so variation ratio means so uh data points okay number of data points by total number of data points like that okay so you can see the ratio of uh, uh the points with respect to total number of points like that okay next comes the mean deviation mean deviation is the uh, it's an uh, measuring of the total difference okay from the mean so it's it's like uh, calculating the maximum uh, uh, data value with respect to the minimum data value by total number of data points so the mean deviation is equal to sigma of xi minus x bar by total number of data points this is the formula we have and coming to the standard deviation okay standard deviation also almost same but we have the square root of sigma of xi minus x bar whole square by and this is how it will be represented if at all somebody says to calculate the standard deviation this is the formula applied 
if at all somebody says to calculate the mean deviation, this is the formula apply, okay? So uh, those who are doing the research kind of thing, this kind of analytics are very much familiar to them, okay? Next comes the regression analysis, okay? So regression analysis is also a most famous one. So it is used to estimate the strength and direction of the relationship between variables, okay, that are re linearly related to each other. Simply, we can say that X and Y are the two variables, okay? So which are linearly related and are connected uh, together, okay? Suppose Y is equal to MX plus B, okay? So, uh, so M is M can be considered as the slope, okay? Or the it can be considered as the change in Y due to the given change in X, okay? Both are relatable, X and Y are relatable. And the B can be considered as the intercept, okay? So X and Y both are combined and are relatable, okay? So the regression uh, analysis will be having a terms called X and Y, okay? Both are relatable to each other. Next comes the precision. Precision refers to the level of measurement of exactness of the database, okay? So in order to get the exact value, this kind of precision algorithm or the model or the technique is used, okay? So the precise location data or the, it's related, completely related to the uh, global positioning uh, system kind of thing, okay? So the precise locational data can be measured, okay? Uh, with respect to fraction of a second or unit, okay? So, but the precision, okay? Whatever the data or whatever the hardware may be used, but always this particular data may be sometimes uh, inaccurate, okay? And most of the time the data will be incorrectly only. Little bit of errors will be occurring. That is natural, okay? See, two additional terms are used as well in this particular uh, precision kind of thing. Data quality as well as error. Error, as I've already said, right? There is some sort of inaccuracy or inaccuracy every time. And the data quality refers to the relative accuracy and the precision. How uh, precise that particular result we, we are getting respect to the database. That is what to be considered, okay? So these are some of the models as well as uh, methods for the analytics, okay? So each and every model as well as method is used some or the another way in uh, 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 big data or this particular uh, memory kind of thing. So these are the statistical models and methods for the IoT as well. 